Hi, I'm Janice Walker, and I'm at Georgia Southern University, Department of Writing and Linguistics. I was in grad school in the mid-90s in uh, the MA program when I first got interested in the work that I continue to do with computers and writing. And one of my professors said, Janice, you don't want to get pigeonholed in this, this computer stuff. That's only a fad. Luckily, and this goes to uh, what was the best advice I've ever received, uh, was from myself, ignore the advice. I had, had met a group of people at the conferences, and I cannot tell you how important things like the research network Forum at Four Cs and the Graduate Research Network at Computers and Writing Conference are to those of us uh, doing work in composition studies broadly writ. Uh, no matter what kind of advice we get locally, uh, we can meet people doing work in other fields and find those kinds of things that we're passionate about, that we care about. Uh, my professor, who gave me that wonderful advice to, um, about the internet being a fad, changed his mind when I got the Columbia Guide to Online Style under contract with Columbia University Press before I'd finished my MA. And suddenly he's introducing me and telling everyone, you know, oh, I've encouraged her every step of the way. She's doing this very important work uh, because it was now being published and recognized uh, by other people. But times change so quickly in our field. What is important to people changes minute by minute, if not day by day. Sometimes those of us who are now uh, graduated, uh, in, uh, tenured, promoted, uh, actually lose track with, uh, of some of the important issues. So when we tell you, oh no, that's not a good direction, if you feel strongly enough, if you are passionate, uh, there was a book, Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. Well, I think the same holds true for those of us uh, doing research. Do what you love, what you're passionate about, what you care about. Publication, tenure, promotion, hopefully will follow. I've been very lucky. Uh, the value of my research, uh, especially uh, at the time, was in computers and writing, but primarily in how to cite information online, uh, which also led me into related areas such as intellectual property issues, information literacy issues. Um, it, it got broader than I ever thought. But I was very lucky it was valued at the time because it was published. Um, after I had, you know, a real book, publishing in such venues as online journals like Kairos, which I did, uh, the same professor who told me uh, that the internet was just a fad told me that, you know, that wasn't a good place to publish. But that is a peer-reviewed scholarly journal, and we have, uh, the Kairos board has worked very hard to make sure that it is a high-caliber journal. One of the things that happened was after I finished my PhD and accepted a tenure-track position where I am now, uh, in a new standalone Department of Writing and Linguistics, we began writing our own guidelines for what is or should be valued in our discipline. Not always an easy conversation to have with people, you know, who have come out of our uh, various programs at various times, but an important one. Um, such that, you know, a peer-reviewed journal article online or in print is still a peer-reviewed journal article. What about valuing things like web pages? Not so much, even, even though. These are, these are still very, very uh, important topics that we need to be um, working toward. Uh, we talked about the um, uh, tenure and promotion cases that uh, Cindy Self and uh, the Seven Seas Committee have put together with NCTE uh, are on their website so that you're not fighting these battles alone. And this goes back to the value of community with the research networks and the conferences and the people you meet. So, you know, how did 
one person managed to make these arguments so that you can use that uh, at your own departments. Um, if you can get your research, it's not about what you do research on, uh, it's about, I'm going to go back to passion, your interests and your passion, and making, and then using that to, to make the case um, when you go up for tenure and promotion, if you can show the value of what you did. Um, and if we are not rhetoricians enough to be able in our, our portfolios to make that argument, then maybe we don't deserve tenure. And no, that's mean, because a lot of good people have been turned down uh, for very bad reasons. Um, but that doesn't mean that you do what somebody else wants it thinks is, is important if you don't agree, because you will do a very bad job and you're going to go home not very happy with yourself at the end of the day. My very first graduate class in the MA program, uh, actually I had two, two classes that made and uh, changed my life that first semester. One was uh, computeracy a very bad name for, you know, hey, what's going on with computers and, and, and writing. Uh, the other was a course in bibliography for scholars, how to do research. And at the time, it was still mostly library research, except that there were these databases now on CD-ROM that you could go to the library and access. I decided I wanted to research these things called MOOS, MUD Object Oriented, that we were playing with in the computeracy course that I had just discovered. Uh, but this was a graduate level course in an English department, and they said I had to cite my sources in correct MLA style, and I was very intimidated. So I got the MLA handbook and was trying to figure out how to cite synchronous conversations online and things I was finding on what then was a text-only internet using uh, FTP protocols and gopher protocols and all kinds of weird search things that I was having fun discovering. Well, MLA didn't know that computers existed at the time, so uh, I was on an a email list with these uh, computers and writing folks I had just met online, and I said, how do you cite? Uh, these sources, and they said, well, just make something up, that's what we do. So I did, and um, a few, my, uh, my uh, professor in the bibliography course loved what I did. Uh, he loved the research I did, and he had no problem at all. He didn't even question the citation format, and um, he, he gave me this glowing thing, you know, oh, you have a real talent for research. And I said, oh, okay. So then a, f oh, a month or so later, someone else posted to the list, how do you cite these sources? And I posted back, well, I made something up. I'll share it with you if you would like. I ended up mailing, snail mail. Uh, now remember, this is the mid-90s, we didn't know any better, snail mailing hundreds of copies out before uh, Fred Kemp at one of these conferences, they voted to endorse my style, the um, Alliance for Computers and Writing, and Fred said, why don't you put it on the web? And I said, oh, okay, so I had to go learn HTML so I could post it on the web. And then, of course, I got the book contract, and it, uh, for a while, my style was in almost every handbook out there. Um, someone last night, uh, in response to changes now in um, technologies that we're using for composing, teaching, communicating, and the newest editions of MLA and APA, uh, said it's time for me to uh, come out with a third edition <laughs> uh, uh, because these other areas aren't panning out. Um, your work. Your research, your work can often take on a life of its own. Uh, as I said earlier, this, this uh, moved me into uh, issues of intellectual property. Uh, it moved me, in, in which I've written, uh, researched, read about, published, and amazingly found very interesting. I am 
a quote unquote expert on document uh, uh, documentation, MLA, APA, Chicago, uh, so, you know, several other styles. I actually read those books from cover to cover, you know, through the last three or four editions. Can you think of anything most people think is tedious and boring? And yet I get excited about whether to italicize or underline. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but when you find your niche. It does take on a life of its own and it becomes fascinating to you and uh, hopefully uh, you can make a difference uh, even in some small way.